Hello and welcome to Venture Cafe Presents. I'm Christine Dunn. Joining me today is Stephen Douglas. He's the founder and the managing director of Scramble Systems. Thanks for joining me today. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. So why Scramble Systems? How did you come up with that name? Scramble Systems took a long time to figure out. Uh, the, the name came to me, so I, I couldn't force it. Uh, but literally what we do is scramble systems. We look at organization structures. It could be in higher education. It could be across different industries. And we go in try to repurpose their assets, uh, their human talent, and we literally try to scramble their systems. And so that's kind of a big idea. So what inspired you to create a company that basically takes a look at organizations and tries to help them rethink the way they're organized? There were, uh, there were a, a few different factors in the equation there. One was my background in gymnastics. So uh, working with uh, highly talented people, trying to do very difficult things with our, our bodies and there was a lot of uh, mental training that came along with that. But then also I was working in finance, doing mergers and acquisitions, and then also turnaround. And as a result of that, you see a, a lot, you, you get to really dig into an organization's operations, how the, the dynamics of the, uh, the structure of the organization affect people's decision-making abilities, and then also from a task perspective, what actually needs to get done based on products, services, uh, that, that you're delivering. So all this confluence of uh, gymnastics and that perspective and then also the, uh, the work in professional arenas and, and finance and, and operations. So you had mentioned to me that when you were working in mergers and acquisitions and turnaround, you saw opportunities to do some of those turnaround strategies better. So can you describe for us a little bit about what you mean by that? What, what, what were some of the inefficiencies in turnaround strategies that you were finding? Sure, so primarily where I focus my efforts on and over what was most uh, apparent to me is when we would work with a portfolio company and we would see a backlash uh, because these were very stressful situations. Um, the companies were had to be turned around as quickly as possible. And so sometimes the employees uh, would end up undermining some of the efforts of the, 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 uh, the firm and our efforts to, to turn the organization around, which is totally understandable. Uh, but it was very difficult to, uh, because I'm, I'm, I like to have re good relationships with the people with whom I work, uh, it was very difficult for me to try to internalize figuring out. Sometimes it felt diametrically opposed to our objectives, to what we're actually doing in the organization. So I struggled a lot with that. So then in that kind of situation that where there's kind of like a lot of the heat in the moment, how do you kind of you know, get people to disengage from kind of their way of thinking and get them to kind of refocus. What are some of the techniques mm -hmm. that you found have worked in order to kind of get people to think in a different way? So, after I left um, M and A and and turn around, uh, I wanted to pilot some of these new techniques that I these were just hypotheses that I had about how we we're going to help organizations work uh, better together, improve their, their efforts, um, and make difficult decisions and make them inclusively, instead of just the command and control center that we often see uh, used in, in a turnaround situation. So um, the, the, what we came up with is this concept of an immersion. All right, and you probably heard the word immersion a lot. People throw it around, especially in the education space, learning a new language. Um, but what we developed and what I developed over the past six years are these, these core concepts of principles, methodologies, and practices that constitute our definition of an immersion. And so when applied across an organization or in a higher education uh, scenario on campuses that we, we do uh, with our scrambles on campuses, we're able to get these astounding results that people usually say, see over months, weeks and months of effort in a matter of uh, hours. So can you give me an example of what an immersion would be? Yeah, so um, on our, for our campuses, what we'll do is we'll pull together anywhere from 50 to 100 students. I mean, next week we're at Tufts University, the following week we're out at Boise State, Harvard uh, following that, and then Boston College. So we bring together the student innovators and founders Usually they're aspiring, so they may, they may not have started a venture, but they're definitely interested in the space. And so what we'll do is we'll bring them in and we develop a mandate. So it could be a mandate that extends across two disciplines. It could be across uh, music and chemistry. It could be, uh, in general, just around finding local and global uh, challenges and opportunities that they really are, are passionate and interested in solving. And so we bring them through our program design. And it involves a couple of core components. All right, one is actually the sharing of ideas. 
and there, so typically you'll hear this called pitching, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, then we bring them into a really difficult but important uh, process around team formation. And what we'd like to do is exploit a lot of the weaknesses, these areas where we find that student teams fail most often. For example? For example, recruiting a team. For example, figuring out a partnership agreement with another student on campus. So do you have them work through scenarios or what do you have, what kind of exercises do you have them do? Yeah, so, so they're, it's all that based on their ideas uh, that are relevant to the mandate that we work with our campus partners to create. And um, so, so they actually go through a recruiting process after pitching their ideas to one another. They, they build teams, they form teams around this, and the whole time we're just talking them through all of those significant failure points and giving them the tools and resources and mindset to uh, work past them. So it could be around forming a team, it could be around building a product, it could be around who's doing what work and tasking and delegating. So all along the way, we're, we're, giving, we're constantly giving out best practices. So what, what would you say are three best practices that people most get wrong with building a team? Yeah, so um, very clear. First of all, we, we are really big on understanding where you want to fit in. So there are certain tasks that people will be assigned that although they're competent and capable of doing them, they aren't necessary. It's not something that fills their bucket so to speak. Mm -hmm. and so they're not emotionally motivated, so right. even though they might be intellectually capable. And like, and that toasts you. Mm -hmm. from when, when you're in a high performing team and you're doing, uh, you're working at a, a certain pace that, to keep up with everybody so you don't, you're not the, the lead behind, uh, those types of tasks um, without it, if you're not self-aware, those type of tasks will just burn you out. And so that's that's a really important factor that um, we have a way that we address that uh, with what we call scrambolytics. And so for our students, they get these scrambolytics and it's a psychometric uh, graph that we overlay uh, or embed inside the scramble. So they're simultaneously executing on these ideas and building and prototyping, but then we're also able to tie that to the outcome. So their personal work style and performance outcomes. So. Put that in English for me. What does that mean? Exactly? <laughs> um, so, so we know we're able to show a student um, when she is building out a product and service and is feeling some stress points um, where there's a lot of on their team where there's a lot of there may be a lot of discussion around um, they're not heading in the right direction. They're feeling very frustrated, burnt out. We're able to show the scenario and pull together the factors, a package of factors to say to a student, hey here's what's going on right now. So give them a language around where they're going to be most successful and how to get them, put themselves in that scenario, their ideal work environment, their ideal learning environment after the scramble. But they experience a lot of the pain in the scramble. I see. And so when you're in that kind of situation, are there kind of um, common scenarios that you find that students are getting themselves into that are impeding their success? Yeah. I'm, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily. Uh, we know the trigger points along throughout so what the immersion. Would be an example of a trigger point. So uh, we know that recruiting is is uh, just a, a very difficult thing for students to open up, especially in a very safe environment. So we're able to provide uh, the social lubricant for that to happen. Uh, really help them work through some of the personal inhibitions that we find students will, will always have or sharing ideas so we introduce a lot of the concepts around intellectual property and help them understand well how do i protect myself preemptively before i'm in a situation where i have to have a very difficult conversation then we'll prompt them with difficult conversations and how to work through a lot of them and so this is literally we're just drilling them uh against these very complex and difficult issues for 40 hours straight mm -hmm. and at every single step we're providing those um, the findings and best practices that we've had from doing six six years of these immersions. It's like operational boot camp. It's uh, it, it's it, it's very it's challenging and it's exhausting. But um, you, you've never seen a group of fifty to one hundred students that walk out more exhilarated and exhausted. <laughs> well, Stephen, it was so lovely to talk with you. Thank you so much for telling us a little bit about Scramble Systems. Well, today. thank you so much. Look forward to uh, following up at some point. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Great. For the Venture Cafe Presents, I'm Christine Dunn.